Hi friends, this lesson is for Module 3, Lesson 3. We have been looking at objects to see which ones are shorter, longer, or the same length as. Today we're going to continue kind of doing some of that work, but we're going to look at a, something a little bit different. It's about measuring distance. So here we go. I have two friends. The question we're going to ask is, who has the longest walk? My two friends named are Ava and Ella. Now if I look at Ava's path, it's that blue line that goes from Ava all the way to her house. Ella has a similar path down at the bottom, but they're both just a little bit different. It's hard to tell who has the longest walk because they kind of look the same and they're all zigzaggy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my good eyes and even maybe my finger to help me count along to see how much space they take up as they walk. I'm going to go ahead and start with Ava. I'm going to count all the pieces or the different parts of the squares that she has to walk to get to her house. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, it takes Ava seven steps to get to her house. If you look between that one and that two, I kind of had to show how she turned the corner. Maybe these are like blocks, and every time she goes to a new block, she has to cross the street. Kind of like in between three and four. It could look like one big long line, but if I think about it like blocks, I can just go ahead and say, oh, there's a little street right there she has to cross to get to the next path. She takes seven blocks to get to her house. What about my friend Ella? Let's do the same thing. Let's count and see how far it is to her house. One, two, three. Oh, she's turning the corner. Four, five, six, turning another corner. Seven, eight, nine. Friend, who had the longest walk? Was it Ava or Ella? That's right, it was Ella. She had to go nine blocks to her house and Ava only had to go seven. Now, do you see how I didn't get to move the girls so their endpoints were the same or that I could stretch out that long path to make them look similar. For this one, I had to look at the squares and see how many squares or steps they had to take to get there. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to try it again with someone else. This time it says, who will get to school first? So, Mrs. Evans and I left our house at the same time. I'm at the top, Miss Arwood. I'm going to go ahead and count to see how far it takes me to get to school. Before I do that, I want you to go ahead and press pause. I want you to use your good finger and count to see if you can see how long it takes me to get to school. When you think you know, press play to check yourself. Okay, what's your number? How many blocks do you think I have to go? Ooh, let's see if you're right. Here we go. One, I'm going to turn that corner. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Wow, I had to go 10 blocks to get to my house. Now I wonder, oh sorry, it's my phone. I wonder if Mrs. Evans has a shorter path or a longer path to get to school. How could I figure it out? What would I do to Mrs. Evans' path? You're right, I'd have to count it just like I did mine. I'm just going to count using those blocks. Here we go. I'm going to have you go ahead and count it. Press pause, press play when you're done to check yourself. All right, do you know how long it took Mrs. Evans to get to school? Let's count and see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that lucky duck. She only has to go eight blocks. So who is going to get to school first? Me having to go ten or Mrs. Evans having to go eight? You're right. Mrs. Evans is for sure going to get there first. All right. For this one, for this measurement, we didn't have to look at objects to compare them. We had to look at um, a path or how long it took them to get to a different place. We used the blocks behind the path to help us figure out how long it was. Today our learning goal says, I can order three different links. That just means you can put them into order, maybe from shortest to longest or longest to shortest. But today's going to be a little bit different. Our objects are going to be stuck in one spot. In the last few videos, I've been moving them so that we can see the end marks are in the same point. The end points are in the same spot. But today, we're going to have to use the squares behind them, or the rectangles actually behind them, to help us. Let's practice. 
All right, so it says, how can I tell which is the biggest? I'm going to show you three different rectangles. I have rectangle A, rectangle B, whoa, and a wild rectangle C. I need to figure out which one is the biggest or the longest. Now, do you have a plan thinking about those stripes behind them that could help us to measure without being able to put them endpoint to endpoint? Hmm, what could we do? Hey, did you think that we could look at the stripes behind them and see how many stripes take up that one rectangle? Let's start with A. I'm going to put my circle up there by A. If I start here, I'm a little bit into the white. I see one full blue, one full white, one another full blue, and then a little bit more. It looks like I have at least three full stripes. Let's look at B. Do I have three full stripes for B? No, I don't. That must mean B is smaller than A. Let's look at C. I know that he's kind of crooked, but let's see about how many stripes C takes up. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness. C is definitely the biggest. Do you see how I used the lines behind them to figure out how big all of the parts were when I didn't have a chance to move them? All right, it's your turn. You're going to practice it now. Can you go ahead and get your dry erase board or your marker and your, or sorry, your dry erase board and your marker or your math journal? Because I'm going to have you write a few things down. When you're ready, press play. All right, do you have your board with you? All right, I need you to write a few things down. I do not want you to draw a picture. I want you just to use the picture on the board. I do not need you to write all the sentences. We're just going to write down our answer one by one. If you see on the side, there are three questions. The first one says, which is the smallest? We're just going to start with that one question. So I'm going to go ahead and put those three rectangles up again. I want you, using the lines behind it, to check to see which one is the smallest. On your dry erase board or on your math journal, I want you to write down your answer. You're just going to do A, B, or C. Which is the smallest? You have your answer? All right, let's check yourself. Did you say B? You're right, because if I look at B, it only takes up two stripes and a little bit more. That's definitely smaller than the rest of them. This one had three and this one had five. Goodness. Now, our next one says, which is the longest? On your board or in your mattress, I want you to write down which one's the longest, A, B, or C. Ready? C. Oh, yeah, good job. All right, we're rocking and rolling. Ooh, trickier still. It says, put the rectangles in order from shortest to longest. So you're going to write them in letters in the order that goes from the shortest one all the way to the longest one. Go ahead and press play when you're ready to check yourself. Okay, here we go. We're going to do shortest. That's B. A is in the middle, and then C for sure is the longest. How did you do, friend? Well done. All right. Now. Our learning goal said that you can order three different links. That means put them shortest to longest, longest to shortest. Sometimes we can move them so that their endpoints are together. Sometimes we just have to problem solve, like we did using those stripes to see about how big they were. That's what we're going to practice now. I'm giving you three new rectangles. On your dry erase board, I want you to write the numbers one, two, and three. And you're going to answer question number one, then answer question number two and then answer question number three. Question number set one says, which is the smallest? So on that line, you're gonna write down which letter rectangle is the smallest. You're gonna to have to use the stripes behind them to help figure it out. Number two says, which is the longest? And finally, number three says, put the rectangles in order from shortest to longest. When you're all ready, you should seesaw your teacher, your answers to number one, two, and three. Good luck, friend.